In this tutorial, I will be using Xilinx Vivado 2018.3 to create a project with the Microblaze Softcore processor that utilizes the buttons, switches, and LEDs on a Digilent Pink Z1 development board. Keep in mind that the version of Vivado you use is important and that attempting this tutorial with a version other than 2018.3 may result in issues in your project. We're going to start by creating a new project and giving it an appropriate name and save path. I typically make sure that the Create Project Subdirectory box is checked to start off with a clean project directory. We are going to be creating an RTL project because our focus is on code slash project creation. The other types of projects put emphasis on other developmental goals. Next, we are given the opportunity to add or create project source files. There are three main types of source files in FPGA design, RTL, simulation, and constraints. RTL files define modules using HDL. Simulation files define the tests used to verify operation of the modules. And constraint files specify operating and implementation constraints for the project. These often include pin and timing constraints. After that, we need to select the part or board we will be using. In this case, we will be using the Digilent Pink Z1 development board. As a quick note, if you do not see this board present in your installation of Vivado, do a quick Google search for Vivado board files and follow the instructions to install the board files. For this walkthrough, we're going to use a block design approach. The first thing we're going to need is a clock for the system. Because we use the Pink Z1 board files for this project, we don't need to define our own clock pins and constrain them to a module's port. We can simply drag the system clock onto the block design and it will generate a clock wizard module and connect it to the appropriate pin. Next we'll need to verify that the reset is set correctly. For this project, I'll be using only active low resets, meaning the modules will be held in reset whenever a low signal is detected. With that being said, we'll need a source for the reset signals. Normally, this would be some external signal that can be used to reset the whole system, but for this walkthrough we'll be using a constant value for simplicity. Note, this is not best practice. Next, we'll add a microblaze processor and allow Vivado's block automation tool to assist us in configuring and connecting it. The only change we're going to make is increasing the local memory space to 128 kilobytes. As you can see, the block automation tool has added several modules to the block design and automatically connected them. The system reset module is used to synchronize resets across clock domains. An explanation of the local memory bus can be found in the previous video, but essentially acts as a cache for the microblaze processor. Also worth recognizing is that the clock and reset lines are shared among all attached modules. The Microblaze debug module can be used for debugging code on the Microblaze processor. As usual, don't forget to check the appropriate reset conditions are set and driven by the appropriate source. As a reminder, if the board files weren't used during the creation of this project, a constraints file would need to be written connecting the top level module's ports to pins on the chip. You would also likely want to specify expected clock speeds within the constraints file. Next, we'll add the GPIO modules to allow communication between the microblaze processor and the LEDs, switches, and push buttons on the Pink Z1 development board. Because we use the board files during project creation, we can simply select the interface we wish to use and the GPIO module does the rest. We'll be allowing the Vivado connection automation tool to assist us in hooking up the GPIO modules. After running the connection automation tool, we can see that the AXI interconnect module has been generated and automatically connected. We can also see that the clock and reset lines are still shared, but the AXI communication lines connect to the processor through the AXI interconnect, which behaves as a router for the AXI signals. 
To finish the RTL portion of this walkthrough, we need to generate the output products for the block design, create an HDL wrapper, and generate a bitstream. Generate output products uses the block diagram we created and creates the appropriate HDL and constraints files. Additionally, it saves the IP customization parameters for all of the IP blocks in our block design. Next, we need to create a top module file for our project. The top module file behaves as the root file and includes modules that are used in the design, connects them together, and provides a definitive interface to which the FPGA can connect. The ports defined in the top level module are the ports assigned to pins on the FPGA in the constraint files. As a very loose analogy, you can think of your top level module as your entry function, similar to main in C. It is where all other functions, or HDL modules in this case, are used or instantiated, although they can be defined elsewhere. Modules can contain, or be composed of, other modules similar to functions in C. Unlike in a C entry function, however, the top level module is the only module which can directly interact with and be assigned to external inputs and outputs, which in our case are pins. To ease further development on our project, make sure to select the Let Vivado Manage Wrapper and Auto Update option so that we do not need to recreate or modify our wrapper file when changes occur in our block design. Bitstream generation involves a few steps and can be considered, sticking with our loose analogy of C, as a compilation process resulting in a file specific to a target. With C, this would generally be a specific architecture, but in our application it will be a specific FPGA chip. The resulting file, called a bitstream file, can be used to program the target FPGA. Once the bitstream file has been generated, the project and bitstream file need to be exported to the Xilinx SDK so that we can program the Microblaze softcore processor using C. When you export the project, be sure to include the generated bitstream file. Now let's launch Xilinx SDK. We will start off with a page showing us how the GPIO module's AXI addresses have been mapped to a memory addressable format thanks to the AXI interconnect. In order to write some code for the microblaze, we are going to create a new application project. We will just be using the blank project. Let's add a new source file where we can write our code. The two include files we'll need are the X parameters and XGPIO files, which are automatically included in our include path. The X parameters file contains the definitions for the constants we will be using for device IDs. The XGPIO file includes the prototypes for the GPIO read, write, and set direction functions we'll be using. Our program will simply output the value of the push buttons on the LEDs. First, we will initialize and set the direction for the switches, LEDs, and push buttons. After that, we will continuously read the values of the push buttons and switches and only output the values of the push buttons on the LEDs. We will need to program the FPGA with the bitstream file we generated before we can run any of our software on the Microblaze processor. You may receive a warning that the hardcore processor in the chip is not being utilized. This is okay because we are only using the Microblaze softcore processor for this tutorial. Now let's run our code. When we use debug as hardware, the software is loaded but stopped at the beginning of the code we've written. To run our software, we must click on the run button. After turning on the development board and programming it, we will see the green LED in the middle of the board turn on, indicating the FPGA was successfully programmed. As you can see, the LEDs light up when their corresponding push button is pressed. However, the switches do not affect the LEDs. In order to prove this functionality is through software alone, let's change the program to output the value of the switches on the LEDs. Notice that once we have loaded the bitstream, we can load new code to run on the Microblaze processor without needing to reprogram the FPGA. After changing the code and loading it onto the Microblaze processor, the push buttons no longer affect the LEDs, but the switches do. In this tutorial, we have successfully created a project with the Microblaze softcore processor and ran software on it. 
Once you have successfully performed this tutorial, you will have a solid base project that can be used to develop custom Logic FPGA modules that can connect to and communicate with the MicroBlaze processor over Axie. Thank you for watching.